Again, we say good morning to everyone. We greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for each of you all's presence. We thank God for the presence of his Holy Spirit. And we thank God that he has given us his Son to be our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we come to worship God today, again, we thank you for your presence. For we know God is a good God. And God is worthy to be praised. For those that will be joining us live on Facebook, we are so glad to have you here, uh, as well as those who will see us on uh, YouTube. We greet you also in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Undoubtedly, whatever you went through this week, one thing we can declare is God is good God. Amen. And God is worthy to be praised. Our Psalms 100 reads, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God's. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. May God bless the reading of his most holy and sanctified words. As we go to our service this morning, again, we'll just follow the program that we've followed since we've been blessed to help worship service in the open air. I don't know about you all, but I've been enjoying myself. Amen. 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 I've been enjoying ourselves. And so many people you hear from day to day just say, I sure enough be glad when we can get back to church. Have you ever heard somebody say that? If, you know, if you didn't think you had time for God before this pandemic started and you've been stuck at home and you've been all alone and you feel like there's nobody around, your children be getting on your nerves, spouse been getting on your nerves and you found out one thing that you've been missing is the presence of all of God's people as we worship together in spirit and in truth and it just lets you know how important it is when God says do not fail to assemble yourselves because the Bible says where there is two or three gathered in my name what he said I'll be in your yes I know God is in our midst amen because God through his power of his Holy Spirit is holy fresh on us and because we're able to come together for just an hour a few minutes more we can go home and tell somebody about the goodness of god and what god did in our lives as he allowed us to assemble together and let god be in our midst amen amen, amen. so moving forward in our program we have deacon J. Ann Thompson will uh, come and lead us in scripture this morning and then we will have deacon reed come and lead us in prayer amen amen, amen. And before Deacon J uh, comes, uh, just one quick announcement. Uh, Sister Diane Bailey uh, called Sister Herb on yesterday uh, and said her mom is in the hospital. Uh, she's been there since Tuesday. Uh, and hopefully she'll be able to come home in just a few days. That's uh, Sister Diane uh, Bailey's mom. I believe her name is Sister Ruby King. Uh, amen. So uh, let us keep her in prayer as we go to God and pray. Amen. Amen. And all of those who say pray for me. Thank you, Pastor, and good morning. Good morning. Our scripture this morning will come from St. John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7. St. John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art the teacher come from God, but no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? 
and he entered the second time into his mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say it unto thee, ye must be born again. We thank the Lord for his blessed word. Good morning, God and stuff. Isn't it good to be alive? You know, uh, while we were cooped up at home, Sunday seemed so long, we couldn't get up and get dressed and couldn't go nowhere. But look what the Lord has done for us now. He made a way for us to worship. But if you remember back in the old days, this is how we used to have church outdoors. We didn't have a building. Now we in this place. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for allowing us to get up this morning to see another day that we've never seen before, and after it's gone, we'll never see it again. Lord, we thank you for the reasonable portion of health and strength that you allow us to have, and Lord, we just thank you for everything you've done and everything you're going to do. Lord, bless this church. We are small in number now, but the Lord, we are great in spirit. Bless our children and our children's children and their children. And bless all those who do not know the important of sin. Lord, forgive us for all the things that we've done wrong. And cast them to see of forgiveness for they should never rise again before us in this world or other things. Lord, we thank you for every day that you have given us. And we thank you while we in this old plague called virus, the Lord. We don't know where it came from. We don't know what's going to happen. But we know that you have not given charge over this earth to anyone here. But we know that, Lord, in time, you will straighten it out because you are the greatest physician of all. Bless our homes, make them what you have them to be. And bless all those who are trying to assemble to worship thee. Oh, Lord, forgive us for our sovereignness and for our un unwillingness to do things that you would have us to do. Bless us as we continue to go on in your name. All these blessings we ask in thy Father's name. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. 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 You know, prayer just does something to us. Amen. amen. When you feel like you can't go on, just a little whisper of prayer. You can change every doubt, every fear, and calm every storm. Y'all know God is a prayer answering God, amen? amen. Hey, anybody believe that morning? This morning that God is a prayer answering God? I know he is. Because he's done it for me on more than one occasion. Even when I had to pray for somebody else, I seen God working in their lives. For well, God is a good God. And God is worthy to be praised. Y'all hear me say that all the time because it's so true. There's nothing else that we can praise other than God. And if you desire to praise something other than God, you're wasting your time. Because I guarantee you, if you go pick one of them stones up over in the parking lot there, and you begin to shout to it and praise to it, it's not going to do anything except be a rock. Amen? But when you call on the name of God, our God can respond to us. And whatever we need, God can provide, and God can answer our prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as we go further in our service this morning, we'll have a couple selections. Uh, then we'll hear a word from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it, there is room up front, too, uh, if anybody kind of scooted things back. So uh, if you need to spread out a little bit further, there is room over here on the uh, side, and there's room over uh, on the left side and your right side. Amen? Amen. 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 We're asking that all members of the, the Mass Bar and the Will will come up and sing with us this morning. I just want to praise Him forever and ever. The spacious that belong up
COVID-19 and we look at uh, some of the videos poking fun at it and one of a little five-year-old girl who's saying all the fun things that I want to do I can't do anymore and it's just not fair but aren't we so blessed this morning that we can come out and praise the Lord yeah. let's give him a hand clap how many of you know that Jesus is the best that ever happened to you.
How many of y'all agree Jesus is the best thing? That ever happened to you. Reverend Smith likes to reference if it had not been for God on our side. But Jesus is the best thing. That ever happened to not only me, but to you and to us. Even those who have not recognized that Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to them. At some point in their lives, I pray that they would see the glory of God and that they would choose Jesus as their Savior. Our scripture this morning will come from Genesis chapter number 17. Genesis chapter 17, we're going to read a few verses, then we're going to turn to Genesis 18 and read a few verses. Amen. Amen. In Genesis chapter 17, we're going to read verses 1 through 6, then 15 through 18, and then in Genesis chapter number 18, we're going to read uh, verses 9 through 15. And don't worry, I'm not going to preach for no two hours because we're reading all them verses. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But sometimes you got to read a few verses in order to get the whole picture of the sermon. Amen. 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 So Genesis chapter number 17, verses 1 through 6, 15 through 18. Then we're going to go to chapter 18, verses 9 through 15. Amen. 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 If you have the strength and the will, let us stand for the reading of God's word. Genesis chapter number 17, verses 1 through 6 says, And Abraham was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and blameless, and be blameless. Then I will make thee a covenant between me and you, and will greatly increase the, your numbers. Abram fell face down and said to God, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you. Kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be God to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. Uh, now if we would go down to 15 through 18. God also said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you will no longer call her name Sarai, but she will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations, kings to people, will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, will a son be born of a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, if only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Now turn over to chapter number 18, verses nine through 15. And it says, where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. They're in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old. And Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, 
After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have displeasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? If any, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return at this time, appointed time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. You may be seated. Amen. For a few moments this morning, using the title subject, When God Promises to Bless You. When God Promises to Bless You. Today, I believe more than ever, God's people need to stand on the promises of God. So much uncertainty has gone on throughout the world, in our city, and in our country, that those of faith need to be able to stand on the promises of God. I believe today people need to be reassured that God's promises will never fail. I believe that people of God need to be assured that God will do just what God said he will do. I believe that the people of God uh, need to hear from God. And the only way we can hear from God is to, first of all, be found in God. The only way that we can be found in God is to have Jesus as our personal Savior. Today, I am uh, reaffirming to us that God never fails. Sometimes it feels that God has shut up heaven, that God has closed his ears, and that God has ceased from hearing our prayers. I believe that some of us need to be reassured that however, in whatever your circumstances, God has not forgotten you about you. Not that God has shut himself off from his people, but at times it seems like uh, things in our lives cause us to lose focus of who God truly is in our lives. Yeah. Not that God has shut the life off of, of, of us being in Him, but sometimes things in our lives make us lose focus of the goodness of God. Sometimes when storms rage violently in our lives, the winds begin to blow voraciously, orderly, and earnestly. Sometimes when things begin to get strenuous in our lives, we forget to forget to remember the goodness of God. In other words, we remember that God says, I promise to bless you. You see, some of us remember of yesterday when we asked God for a blessing. Even today, we have not received that blessing. But I'm here to tell you this morning that just because you asked it some time ago does not, re does not mean that God has forgot that he promised to bless you. You see, sometimes we must stand in the midst of our storms of our lives in order for God to see that we stand not only for him, but we stand true to ourselves. You see, only those who believe and trust in God will be able to move mountains out of their way. Just because problems and storms arise in our lives does not mean that God has forsaken us. Sometimes for us in our lives, it's not enough that we read the word of God and all doubts and fears begin to be moved out of our lives. Every once in a while, it seems that our prayers go unanswered. Every once in a while, it seems like the trials and tribulations of our life seem to drag on and drag on and drag on and keep on dragging on. It seems that every now and then that the burdens that we are called to bear, God does not care. Every now and then, it seems that God has forgotten that he promised to bless us, to keep us, and to prosper us. However, this morning I need uh, each of us to understand that no matter our circumstances, we can remember the song that said God is a good God, yeah. that God is a great God, yeah. that God can do anything but fail. Right. This morning we can understand that because God never fails, he can move mountains out of our way. Yeah. God is a good God and God is a great God and God can do nothing but fail. Right. This morning we need to understand we don't have to doubt just because we face dissatisfaction in our lives. Sometimes in our lives, disappointments will come. Storms will rage and situations will cause us to endure in the word of God. 
You see, sometimes we have to put things in us in order to prepare us for what we're going to face tomorrow. If you don't trust in God in the good times, how are you going to trust Him in the hard times? If you don't believe that God got you out of your storm on yesterday, how do you know that God can get you through your storm of tomorrow? Right. Too many of us have forgotten that God promised to bless us. Too many of us have forgotten that God says, I'll be your strength, your stronghold, I'll be your all and your all. all right. This morning we have to believe that if God brought us to it, God will get us through it. We have to understand with an assurance this morning that God promises never fail. No matter how long we have to wait, no matter how long the storm, no matter how heavy the burden we are called to bear, no matter what we face, we have to believe that God can do it. When we think about the promises of God, it's like a promissory note that we can go cash that will never fail. Uh -huh. You see, when God promises to bless you, He's not like the banks that we know about, mm -hmm. that we deposit our money in, and we trust that when we go get that money, what we deposited will be there for us. Yeah. But every now and then, things in this world break down all around us, and we go to the bank where we deposit our paychecks, we go to the bank where we deposit our uh, social security and every once in a while we hit that button and we say, wait a minute, what I'm seeing cannot be right. Because sometimes in this life, things go astray. Sometimes in this life, things that we trust in begin to fail us. We put our cards in that bank or in that teller machine. We go fill out that check and say, give me what I put in only for somebody to say, wait a minute, we don't have what you just asked for. You see, they can't always fulfill the promises that they have obligated themselves to. But when we deposit our faith in God, when we deposit our trust in God, when we tell, when we allow God to use us and benefit our lives, whatever we deposit, it will not bounce, nor will it have insufficient funds. Because the God we serve is the God of any hill. The God we serve owns every mountain of every hill. The God we serve owns the valley of every hill. The God that we serve says, I'll be your bridge over troubled water. I'll be your keeper in a time of trouble. Yes, you see, as we look at Abraham and his wife Sarah, then from their perspective, God had forgotten his promises. Yeah. For some 24 years, God had kept telling them to hold on and to hold out. Yeah. For some 24 years, Abraham waited and believed that God would bless him. Yeah. Abraham was 75 years old when God said, get up from where you live. Go to a place that I will show you where I'm going to prosper you and bless you. Has anybody ever been heard the voice of God and let me show you to a place where I'm going to bless you and prosper you? You heard what God said, but instead of moving, you sit down right where you are. You didn't promise or you didn't trust that God was going to bless you when he took you to where he was going to show you. You see, some of us are not where we want to be because we didn't trust God when he told us to get up and move. Abraham was called to leave his family. He was called to leave his friend and move to the land of Canaan. At 86, the Bible says he became the father of Ishmael from, the hand, from his wife's handmaid, Hagar. Thirteen more years had passed by and still God's promises, or Abraham was still called to hold on to God's promises. Yeah. You see, but sometimes God will show up when you least expect it. All right. It said at the 24th year of his appearing, God appeared to Abraham. And for the first time, he used his messianic title of El Shaddai. Oh. El Shaddai means that I am God Almighty. Right. Don't you know there's nothing too hard for God Almighty? Yeah. Don't you know it is God Almighty that says, I will bless you yeah. in all times. I will have you in my life. Yeah. You see, when sometimes when things go astray in our lives, God says, I will keep my promise. He called Abraham to endure for some 24 years. Many of us have been walking with God for two days and we expect all the things in our lives to turn around and change. Some of us only been trusting God since we got up this morning. Some of us only been trusting God since this pandemic started. And you're wondering why God ain't working the way you wanted to. God doesn't work on our calendar. God does not work on our time, but God shows up. You see, as he 
depended, as Abraham depended on God, as Abraham trusted that God would keep his promises, Abraham had to walk blameless before God. What does mean blameless before? It says he had to walk with integrity before God. He had to obey God. He had to be faithful to the promises of God. And he had to bless others. Don't y'all miss that? God called him to walk blameless. In other words, we can't be a stumbling block to the people we're trying to tell about Jesus. We can't be a stumbling block to the same person that we want to uh, lift up the name of Jesus. You can't go and talk about somebody and then tell that same person you ought to come to church with me on Sunday. You can't go talk about somebody to somebody and then tell them that you ought to come to church with me on Sunday. Only what we do for Christ shall last. You see, he called Abraham to walk up to walk blameless in front of God. Though Abraham's blessing was unconditional, God set a condition on him. And that was to be faithful, to be obedient, and to bless others. How many of y'all know God didn't give you all that you have just to keep for yourself? Amen. Some of us don't believe in blessing other people. Y'all showing up that quiet? <laughs> Some of us don't believe in blessing other people. We ride off the highway. We see a person with a little sign. And we ride right on by them. Because you said the same way I got a job, you can get a job. But how do you know the, do the dollar that you're going to bless them with will let them get on the toilet, get to the place where they're going to put in the application and allow God to bless them with the promise God said he was going to bless them with on yesterday. Now, I'm not saying that we got to stop every time somebody's on the corner. Because if I see you more than once or twice, I'm going to ride by you. I'm just being real. But sometimes we have to understand in order for God to bless us, we must be a blessing to somebody else. We must know that God promises to bless us. Nothing and no way can stand. Nobody can stand in its way. God is so good that when we look at ourselves, sometimes we block our own blessings, but we only delay our blessings. Some of us have been so hard-headed that God can't pull into our spirit the very thing that will bless our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us need to give over and let God be God. Yeah. You see, the God that we serve is an awesome God. He's an all-sufficient God, and He has assured us that His words are true. Yeah. We can rest in the fact that God is a God of mercy. That God is a God full of grace, blessings, and keeping power. That God is able to mold us, to make us, and to make our lives better when our lives are in Him. Some of us have heard it said that we are, when God is for us, He is more than all the world is against us. Amen. We have heard it said that when God, that God will put no more on us than we are able to bear. Right. We have heard it said that God will feed us. He will sustain us. He will hold us. He will strengthen us and God will encourage us. But how many of y'all forget about the promise of your yesterday? How many of y'all know that when you ask God some 20 years ago, it doesn't mean that God forgot. Because everybody knows that God is an all-knowing God. That God is an all-seeing God. And just because he saw it on yesterday or just because you asked him some 20 years ago doesn't mean that our all-knowing God has forgot about what you asked him. You see, when God promises to bless you, God will never fail you. When God promises to bless, not only can we believe it, but we can hold on to it. And not only can we hold on to it, but we can hold on and hold out. If we hold out, then our change is going to come. If we hold out, then the struggles that we face will be washed away. You see, just because we have a little bit of faith, just because we have a little bit of belief, doesn't mean that God negates the fact that God is a good God. The fact that we are called to pick up our cross daily does not negate the fact that God still is in control. Yeah. Just because we do not pick up our cross daily does not mean that God has relinquished his power. Yeah. You see, but God is still sitting high and God is still in control. Yeah. When you look at biblical faith, biblical faith is rendered as, uh, excuse me, when you look at biblical belief, it is rendered as faith. Faith denotes that one trusts in the Almighty God. Yeah. The word in the English version says faithfulness denotes trustworthy and trustworthiness and dependability. How many of y'all know that God is trustworthy and He's dependable? How many know that God will not fail you?
Mighty God, we should understand that God never fails and we can count on his promises as if they are already done. Yeah. That's what biblical hope is. Yeah. It's not hope that the world hopes for. You see, the hope of the world says, I wish. It says, I plead. I hope I get. But when we ask God for something, if we ask God within God's will, yeah. and if God sees fit to bless us, uh -huh. God will says, I will pour into you everything that you ask me for. Yeah. You see, biblical hope says it's all already done. Yeah. Some of us have not received the blessing that God promised us yesterday because we didn't claim what God already gave us. Yeah. Some of us need to stop looking at the enemy and start trusting God. Some of us need to stop trusting in ourselves and believe in the power of the Almighty. You see, God expects those who trust in Him, those who call themselves believer, to trust in Him. The word Hebrew word translated believe is from the root word meaning establish or to confirm. You see, God has established each of us that have been born again. And not only has God established our ways, but he has confirmed our identities. Right. You are no longer who you used to be. Right. Now you are a child of God. Right. God established or confirmed in us the blessings of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is why belief is one of the most important biblical aspects that you hold on to. As God burst into the older lives of this couple we see in the scripture, they were old, they were childless, and they had determination from God. When you and I have determination from God, when God is determined to change our situation, when God is determined to bless us even though we laugh, God's word will be fulfilled. Yeah. God's great gift to Abraham and Sarah was unconditional. You see, when God swears by his name, God cannot rescind what he offers. When God said that he would bless you, when God said that he would keep you, when God said he would be your all in all, when God would said he would be your lawyer in a courtroom, your doctor in a sick room, when God said that he could open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you had not room enough to receive, when God says I will move stones out of your way, when God says no matter what goes on in your life, I can say peace be still, yeah. God cannot rescind that blessing. All right. All right. You see, as he called Abraham and Isaac, uh, excuse me, and Sarah to stand, God says, I'll be with you. God says, I'll be your God, not only to you, but to your offspring. Right. Somebody heard it says, train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. Right. If we don't deposit into our children the blessings of God right now, when they get old, they won't have anything to hold on to. All right. All right. All right. You see, sometimes in our lives, Things that go on in our lives cause us to question God. There are times in our lives that we can't see God working. There are times in our lives that we fail to see God handle his business. And when we fail to see God working, it causes us to question God. You see, Abraham and Sarah question God. When God says, I'm coming to bless you. Yeah. They question God and says, wait a minute, in my old state, do you really believe I'm going to be blessed? Yeah. Don't you know that God is an on-time God? Yeah. Don't you know that God can do anything? Yeah. When the Lord commits himself to blessing you, when the Lord commits himself that whatever you stand in need of, God is going to give. Yeah. When the Lord looks at him and himself and he looks at his son, Though we be frail and fragile, he says he binds himself to us. That means he puts himself inside of us. And that which we stand in need of God is the only one that can bless us. Yeah. You see, when Jesus came on the scene, he broke in us or he poured into us a blessing that we all stood in need of. Yeah. He removed sin from our lives. He created in us clean hearts and renewed in us right spirits. He made our relationship with God the Father whole, and through his blood we were made righteous. We are secure because of the blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary. You and I cannot fathom God's grace. God's purpose of grace in our lives does not hail us captive to our sin. You see, as he blessed Abraham and Sarah, as he said, in a determined time, you will have a son. 
Uh -huh. Sarah laughed at the pronouncement of God. Uh -huh. As God reiterated her, her blessing that she would receive. And God asked her a question. As he asked many of us the question today. Right. Is anything too hard for God? God is asking you, is anything too hard for God? When we walk by faith, it involves looking at our circumstances and facing them head on. It calls us to hold on to the promises of God's unchanging hand. Right. With God on our side, we can defy discouragement, disappointment, and frustration. Uh, we can uh, uh, rise above the temptations in our lives and hope in the everlasting gods. When Sarah laughed, it suggested that Sarah thought three things had already happened. Well, Sarah laughed as Abraham laughed when God says, I'm going to bless you. Well, three reasons caused her to take her focus off the Almighty God. Well, the first one is she forgot that God had already promised to bless them. Right. Then she looked at her dead situation, meaning her childbearing state. She looked and she was already old and she was past the point of giving life to a child. You see, sometimes you and I, instead of focusing on the promises of God, uh -huh. we look at the deadness of our situation. Yeah. As Sarah looked at the deadness of her womb, and we think that God cannot do what God said yeah. he can do. Right. You see, and the third thing, when she looked at her estate, she said, that not only am I old, but my husband is old. If my husband is old. Don't you understand, at 99 and 90, God promised to bless them. It doesn't matter how old you are physically, because God we serve does not know time. One day is but one hour, and one hour is but one day to the God we serve. You see, the God that we serve is not limited by time nor by space. He is not limited by the finiteness of our minds or our lack of ability to trust in Him. But every time God looks at our dead situation, He will bring them to life. God promised Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. Yeah. He promised Sarah that kings and queens would come from her. What God does not need, however, is our help to bless us. Do not try to fulfill your in God. You see, the scripture that we did not read, Sarah tried to outwit, outthink, and outrun God. It said that she gave her handmaiden, her hand servant to Abraham to father a son. Don't you know when God promises to bless you, you don't need to do a thing but hold on and hold out and wait on God to work in your life. Sarah tried to outwit, outthink, and outsmart God by giving Abraham her handmaid. But this only caused resentment to build in her heart. You see, it says when the baby boy Ishmael was born, she looked at him and had resentment for what she had done. Sometimes when we look back over our lives and we see that God had brought us from here and wanted to take us from there, the resentment begins to set in our hearts because we fail to trust God. We don't want to fail to trust God, but we want God to take us into our promised land. We want God to take us into our lands flowing with milk and honey. We want God to enlarge our territory, but the only way we can do that is to trust in God. Some of us need to open up today and let God take control of your heart. God needs to come and fill you with his spirit, the power that only God can give. Some of us need to stop looking at our dead situations and begin to look at the cross which is before us. Stop looking at our problems and our situations, our pains and our troubles, and begin to trust in the Almighty God. Some of us need to stop looking at the things that were behind us and begin to look forward to the things that which are before us. When we trust in God, God's promises will never fail. This morning I need somebody to understand that if you lift up holy hands, if you get ready for God to bless you, if you get ready for God to change your situation, God says he will pour out to you blessings that you have not room enough to receive. Some of y'all stop looking at yesterday and begin to look at your right now and say, God, I remember when you told me when. God, I remember when you said you was going to bless me. God, I remember when you said you was going to make a way out of no way. God, I remember that you'd be a bridge over troubled water. God, I remember that you said you could raise me up off of a sick bed. God, I remember that you said that you can heal me and watch God do what God can only do. Somebody better get ready.
Because if you truly trust God, the promises that he blessed you with or promise to bless you with are on the way. I don't know if he's going to send them tonight, tomorrow, next week. Well, God says, hold on and hold out just a little bit longer. I don't know what your circumstance is. I don't know what your situation you may face. But I know that the God we serve cannot rescind his blessings. How many of y'all know he gave us the best, the best gift of all? When he sent his son to die in our place. How I many of the gift that God's been offering to the world since he sent Jesus into the world? So many people will neglect to hear and fulfill the promise. If God says, I'll be for you, he's more than all the world against you. Yeah. Somebody hold up your hand, spread out your fingers, yeah. and let God know that not only am I going to trust you, yeah. not only am I going to believe in you, yeah. Yeah. but I'm going to hold on. Yeah. And I'm going to hold out until my change comes. Yeah. I'm going to hold up my hands as long as I need to. Yeah. For that promise that you promised to bless me with to come through and to come through and show up and show out. Yeah. Somebody needs to understand that God does not peek into your future. God knows your future. If God had to peek into your future, that means God had to get an answer from somebody else. Yeah. But the all-sufficient, all-knowing God, El Shaddai, the Almighty One, knows what you stand in need of. He doesn't have to peek because he already knows. God says if you want to prosper, not in material things, but in spirits. If you want to prosper and come to know me, to be your heavenly father. If you want your life to change, trust in me. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. We open the doors to the church. If you're here and you stand in need of a blessing, Come and give your life to Christ. Come and let Jesus change your situation. Come and give God your hearts and Jesus your hand. And I guarantee you that the promise that God promises to keep you and to hold you in a time of trouble. I will do just that.